Welcome to Conscious Pathways Conversations, where on Wednesday evenings, you'll be introduced to expert healers from around the world, specializing in different modalities of energy work. I'm your host, Kathy Dale. I'm a vibrational sound practitioner and life coach here in San Diego, helping people harmonize their body, mind, and spirit through a combination of mindset and energy techniques. Tonight's very special guest is renowned artist, author, and healer, Ernesto Ortiz. Ernesto has devoted his life to exploring and communicating the language of the heart, primal movement, and deep inner spaces. Ernesto is recognized in the holistic health and metaphysical field as an artist, photographer, writer, poet, inspiring facilitator, teacher, and therapist. His training began at an early age and has continued for many years with world-renowned teachers in transpersonal psychology, shamanism, music therapy, body work, and more. In 1994, Ernesto created Journey to the Heart, a company dedicated to the upliftment of consciousness and the well-being of people using practical tools to help integrate the physical with the mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. Ernesto's company offers a variety of classes and workshops on Akashic Records, Trans Dance, Tantric Shamanism, Sacred Geometry, Meditation Techniques, Relationship Workshops, Spiritual Photography, and more. Ernesto is an honorary ceremonious, ceremonial pipe carrier. He received his pipe in 1996 from his spiritual grandmother, Barrett Eagle Bear. Ernesto leads transpersonal sacred journeys and adventures to power places around the world. He's facilitated many workshops, seminars, and intensives worldwide. Ernesto has published three books, including The Akashic Records, The Door of Liberation, In the Presence of Love, and is currently working on two other books. This evening, Ernesto will guide us through a very powerful chakra toning meditation, which we'll do towards the end of our session tonight. So please stay tuned for that. Without further ado, it's my honor and absolute pleasure to welcome back Ernesto Ortiz this evening. Hi, Ernesto. Hi, Kathy. What an introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. I it's such a all, treat. I hear all of that and I'm already exhausted. <laughs> yes, you have a very, very busy life. In fact, you you are just in a pit stop right now in Miami, but where are you off to next? Well, uh, uh, next is going to be to Guatemala. I have a little property there and I'm going to go and uh, chill out for a couple of two, three weeks before I take my next uh, journey. Nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, this evening, I'm so excited because we had such a wonderful conversation back in February, and there was so much left unsaid. The Akashic Records are just a fascinating topic for me, and I wanted to kind of go into a couple things that we didn't touch on last time, if that's okay. Sure. So in our last conversation, we talked a little bit about the ego and our suffering caused by our attachments to things people, ideas, beliefs, material items, in what way can the Akashic Records help to release those attachments? Is that a question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, also, it's also a statement. Uh, the ego is such a, such a tricky thing, you know? Uh, many times we think that, that we have conquered certain aspects of ourselves, so, you know, we have conquered the ego when in reality is the ego itself, the one that is making us things that we have conquered that. So, you know, the, the ego is so seductive that and so uh, it's like the, 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 the personal saboteur at its best. And uh, the, the, it's like an octopus that has hundreds of thousands of tentacles. And, and we are wrapped around it without even knowing that we are. And when we, are, when we think that we are liberated from, from the ego, is the ego itself that is making us think that so we can feel this sense of, of grandeur or accomplishment that is not um, rooted in humility. So, you know, so someone that, that truly wants to address and look at the ego. And of course, we have uh, uh, two aspects of the ego, right? The positive and the negative aspects mm -hmm. of the ego. And uh, we cannot really be uh, in human, human form being completely and totally egoless. Right. It just doesn't work. But 
but to have that balance, you know, and if we have the, the positive and the negative egos, uh, to me, one of the most important aspects is to enter into this deep inner exploration of the self and be able to identify both of those and how they operate in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, and once we are capable of identifying that, then we can begin to look at how that ego impacts our mind and our belief systems and then our actions, of course. So uh, to, to work with, with the ego is, is something that, uh, that I think that everyone needs to, to look at. And, but we have to understand the components of the ego. When the question is, for example, when is the ego born? Hmm. You know, when was the ego born in every single human being? Right. You know, and uh, so some people may be scratching their heads right now, but I can tell you quite simply that the ego is born between 18 and 24 months of age. So oh. at first we have uh, a little baby that is a newborn that is beginning to crawl and is beginning to walk and is 12 months, 16 months. And that little baby is, oh my God, what a cute little thing. And everybody adores this little baby. And he's a charming little boy and a little girl. And it's just delightful. But then something happens. Right around age two, 18 months, 20, 24 months of age, seems like a switch gets turned on. And that little cute baby has now turned into this terrible little monster. <laughs> and, and I think that everyone that has children can identify with that. Or if we remember how we worked and operated at that age, we can clearly see this. So that ego is then you know, born at 24 months of age, approximately. So you have a little baby that is celebrating their two year, two, two, uh, two years old or, or three year old birthday, and they have 16 toys around, and one other little baby comes around and they want to take a little something, you know, to play with. And what happens, you know, the birthday boy or girl, you know, looks and grabs that and he goes, no, that is mine. Mm -hmm. Always reminds me of the Lord of the Rings with the, you know, my precious. <laughs> right. The ultimate depiction of the ego. But then that is the action, you know, it's obviously an unconscious action. Mm -hmm. A two, three-year-old is not thinking, I'm going to exercise my, my negative ego to make you, uh, not to, not to let you play with my toy. So, we have to look at how the ego is being playing out in our lives from the time of its inception to the present. And, and if we have a practical tool, and you know, we're here to talk, I guess, a little bit about a lot of things, but the Akashic Records, uh, if we have a, a practical tool like the Akashic Records, it is then with the with the with within Akasha, the field of Akasha, that we can jump into that field, and it's all about the mind. You know, it's it's, it's all about the mind because our entire existence resides in the mind. So, if we are able to understand the huge treasure that we have in the mind, then we can use the mind by connecting to sacred teachings or a sacred technique that will allow, allow us to travel back in time and look at all of the components of the ego and begin to unplug from all of the little hundreds of thousands of tentacles that the ego has all around. And then be able to get to a point in which we can minimize as much as we can the negative ego, and we keep the positive ego under control. Mm -hmm. Because the positive ego can also tell us, oh, you know, I had a fantastic meditation today, I am enlightened, you know? And right. then we go around telling everybody, you know, I'm enlightened, but who is that really talking, you know? Right. So exactly. it's just a very delicate, uh, very delicate thing, but one that I believe that we all have to recognize uh, within ourselves and ask ourselves a question, how is this negative ego or how is the battle between the positive and negative ego manifest in my life? And, and what does it make me do or don't do as a result of that?
Okay, wonderful. And you do, in your book, you do talk about something called the view and how that kind of allows us to see some of these patterns and everything that, or some of the circumstances that we've created. Can you talk a little bit about that too? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, there are three aspects uh, uh, in the Akashic Records that I call the view, meditation, and action. And when we open our Akashic Records, we are changing the condition of our mind at the moment in which we open the records. You know, we are operating right now at a certain vibratory frequency. And by opening our Akashic Records is if we are able to plug in into a higher frequency that allows us to go from where we are to a higher dimensional realm to be able to perceive far more of everything that we need around us. So mm -hmm. by shifting our mind to a higher frequency, then we can learn how to bend time. For example, it's an easy way to explain it. We have point A and point B, and if we're gonna travel in a linear way to the past, and we're talking about 30, 40, 50 years, 100 years or more, that's a very, very long journey. Mm -hmm. But if we if we take a piece of paper like this, and this is point A and this is point B, and we are capable of bending this, bending time, mm -hmm. the line between point A and point B is time. And if we learn to bend it like this, then we can put point A and point B together. So we're actually bending time to be able to go from the now to the past, to any type of event any type of situation that we created or we were a part of in the past, look at it without the attachment of being immersed in that thing. And then we're basically entering the view. Mm -hmm. So the view is being truly in the witness seat, is being able to separate ourselves from the drama, from the situation, from what happened a few days ago or 30 years ago and go to in this form you know with the akashic workers to be face to face once again with whatever happened in the past but without the attachment of what happened in the past now what is important to know is that any event that took place in the in the past cannot change okay right. if you punch someone in the nose that is an action that can never be can never change but what can change is the recognitions, the recognition of the feelings that you ended up with once you realized that, that action was wrong. Right. And also the recognition within ourselves of the feelings that we knew or that we pretty much predict that happened as a result of punching someone in the nose. Uh, right. feeling of inferiority, uh, lack of uh, personal self-worth, not being able to defend himself or herself, you know, uh, anger, lack of forgiveness, all of these things. And by going into the view and being face to face with whatever happened in the past, the us that is bending time and going to the past, mm -hmm. and then dialogue with the us that was involved in that situation in the past and rectify it. Right. So the event doesn't change. Hmm? The event doesn't change, but it's the emotional imprint that that is correct. The, the event can never, ever, ever change. That okay. is an imprint in Akasha and the Akashic fields mm -hmm. that will stay there forever. But right. the energetics left behind that, which is karma. Right, you know, right. That can be erased. And that is why I love the tool of the Akashic Workers as the single most important uh, tool to clean past karma. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talking about, um, well, actually I've got a question for you that has kind of come up. There are a lot of people who might have difficult relationships or fractured relationships with their parents, their siblings and others what are ways that they can heal those relationships now? And is there also a way for us to heal relationships with somebody who has already passed away? 
So say a parent passes, but you still had all of this turmoil or something unresolved. Is there a way in the Akashic Records to, to heal that? So let me answer this question first, and then you can ask me the first one. Okay. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, the threads that connect us to someone like a parent, uh, a grandparent that has passed on, these are very strong karmic connections that for most of us come from previous lives. Unless we have completed the life cycle or the life cycles of evolvement within the gene pool, which usually is nine lifetimes, then we are gonna stay inside of that gene pool, inside, the, inside of that karmic pool until we can liberate ourselves from that. Now, if we have, if we had parents that were unconscious and we are the ones that are now waking up or are awake and we're doing the work, the first thing is to recognize if there are any issues of forgiveness. Most people have, in my classes, I ask this question, how many of you have issues of forgiveness? Either that you have to forgive yourself for something or you have to forgive somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say that 98% of the people, you know, raise their hands. So that right there is the very, very first thing to look at, you know, issues of forgiveness. And also to remember that we chose to be in that family, in that situation. We chose for karmic reasons to be there and maybe we are the ones that are taking embodiment and if we are waking up or we're awake, we'll be the ones that liberate those members of our, of our family, even if they have passed on. Okay, wonderful. Because well, the energy continues to linger and flow between us and somebody else because of the karmic components and the genealogy, especially if they are family members. Okay. So by doing the work to forgive, by doing the work to realize that we were a participant of that, even if we were a child, you know, and we say, well, as children, we don't have any other choice. True, but we have chosen those parents from before, from karmic reasons. Mm -hmm. And then we can do the same kind of thing that I explained, but we have to, uh, with bending time and for in all of that, but we have to first recognize the, the nature of involvement and what are the issues that we are dealing with in our lives, in our relationships, in our job, in relationship to money, to sex, to uh, spirituality, to so many things. And to recognize that we have inherited all of these from our parents, our grandparents, etc., and and truly forgive them, because regardless of the, as to the nature of the condition that existed between us and them, they did the best they could, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and if what the best that they could was really, really, really terrible, well, so be it, you know move on, you know, being a victim doesn't serve you or anyone else for that matter. So self-liberation comes from the space of forgiveness. And, you know, and that space of forgiveness is something that we can work with. Now, I, I, about um, maybe 20 years or more ago, I asked the Akashic Records the question, is my genealogy serving me, yes or no? Mm -hmm. And the answer was no. And I go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. But my grandparents, they were so delicious. They were so incredibly beautiful. And the master said to me, even them, you have to let go of. But I also have two children. So that is my genealogy to the future. So I start doing the work with the Akashic Records and start going deeper and deeper and deeper. And why it took four and a half years? Because it's not easy work. We encounter all the skeletons you know, that there, you know, maybe five lifetimes ago, you were the one or I was the one that initiated the drama that is still present in our lives today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but we, we do the work, you know, with the Akashic workers, with many other beautiful practical tools that exist in the world today, then we can start cleaning the genealogy to the point that we can be completely and totally liberated. And it's through 
our, our liberation. And it's through doing the work of recognition of what others have um, provided for us for our spiritual growth, our mental, emotional development, that we can then liberate them as well. And with that, sufficient enough that in a karmic way, we can unplug once mm -hmm. the job, the work is done, and then they can be liberated so they don't have to be reborn in the same karmic pool. And when they take embodiment, again, they take embodiment in a more conscious family. Mm -hmm. And for us, of course, we're doing the work. So the work for me is, I know that I could not come back again into a family the same or similar, similar to what I had in this lifetime. So mm -hmm. I had to overcome that. So in my next life, I can come back again with a new sign that says the new and improved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so along that line then, when we're talking about how our souls basically choose the families that we're born into for specific reasons, do we also choose the particular countries that we're born into? Like, you know, say, some of us may choose to go into a highly industrialized nation. Others might go into a very underdeveloped, maybe there's civil unrest in one. Do we pick particular countries for specific lessons as well? That, that, that moves with a, with a karmic pool, with a family pool. Okay. You know, uh, if, the, if the karmic pool says, okay, you know, your, your deep, roots come from the Middle East, come from Africa, come from Central America, from uh, Europe or, you know, uh, Siberia or whatever, you know, we're going to follow that karmic pool, basically. So there will be, if you, if you really start studying your genealogy, you will be able to see how the relationship that you have had with your with, with that karmic pool, your parents, grandparents, brother, sister, blood family, mm -hmm. that they have followed you and you have followed them through different incarnations in different places around the world. Like I said before, you know, that only lasts nine lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And then at the beginning, you know, nine is a, the, the, the number of completion. So when, when we complete our karma within that karmic pool in nine lifetimes, then that karmic pool breaks open and we can leave that karmic pool to then, to then get reunited with others that we have karma with to begin a new cycle of nine lifetimes. And that can be in another completely different region around the world. Oh, okay, interesting. And along that same line with time, being able to be bent and, and everything else, how does that work as far as us choosing? Can we pick a particular period of time that we're born in, or is that more linear when we're in that nine cycle? Uh, choosing a particular time and place to be born is definitely possible, but uh, not something that everyone can do. Okay. That is, you know, we leave that to, to, to the masters of the Himalayas, you know, the masters of the Far East, you know, all the enlightened beings that, you know, Rinpoches, there are some beautiful stories of Rinpoches that tell their students, you know, this is my mala and this is something that you will find, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a connection. And, and they leave signs as to where and when and how they can be found. That's a very, very highly evolve mind so mm -hmm. if we can if we can and we can all do it you know it's just a matter of the discipline the time that to put into into achieving that that enlightened mind mm -hmm. but if uh if, if we put the time and if they can do it they leave us the signs that it is possible for us to do the same thing oh wow yeah this is so interesting it can go on so many different levels and I guess too, one of, one of the big things with opening up your Akashic Records is being able to ask the right questions. And you give some wonderful examples in your book and really 
breaking it down so that these are very deep questions with subcategories and everything else. Can you talk a little bit about the art of, of questioning and why that's so important? Sure. Uh, I call it the art of questioning because it's truly an art. You know, uh, when we are in the Akashic records, is the record keepers, the, the masters of Akasha, the ones that have our book of life, and we can then ask questions about what it's in there, but they are not attached. You know, they, for, for some of us, they have been waiting two, three, four or five lifetimes to arrive at a place where we can say I'm home and they have been there waiting in the same way they can wait another two or three or five lifetimes. So there is no attachment that they have to whether or not we ask the right questions or not. But if we ask a question that is a yes or no question, the masters are going to give us a yes and no answer. And if we're satisfied with that, well, so be it. That's the end of the game. But if we really want to go deeper, you know, I, I call it the inner archaeologist. If you want to go deeper within yourself and explore and want to find the root cause of the ego that we're talking about or the relationship with mother or father, where did it come from? Who, who, how did it originate? What happened? All of these, then we have to ask the right questions in order to start going deeper and deeper and deeper. So it's not only uh, who was involved, you know, but what are the ramifications of this in my life? How does this impact impacts me in my personal relationship, in my romantic relationship, in, in my inability to make money? Uh, where does this come from? Uh, who, who, where did it originate it? Uh, who was involved? How long did it last? How did I die satisfied or, or not satisfied or as a result of that? I mean, there's so many questions that can be asked. And that right there, for many people, if they don't have the right teacher in the Akashic Records, they come to a, a block, an impasse. Mm -hmm. When, <clears throat> and this has happened to me with many of my students that come to the next class or they repeat the level one, uh, two, three, four times, that they begin to, to hear. You know, we all have selective hearing. And sometimes we simply don't want to hear the, the right answer. Even though we're willing to ask, you know, there is that personal saboteur. The ego is saying, no, 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 it's not safe to go there. So you don't want to ask more than that. So even if there is a, if we ask a question such as, uh, uh, should I go to Bali in September? Yes or no? And the answer is no. Okay, so we go, okay, so the retreat that I wanted to take in Bali in September, I got a no, so that's the end of it, so I'm not going to go. Okay, so that is the final by not exercising the art of questioning. So when we get a no, instead of going, okay, I'm closing the book and walking away, then we go to the next question. Is this no for now or no forever? How do I change the no to a yes? It is no now because the facilitator that is teaching this class is not of a right frequency for me. Is this no because Bali is not the right place for me to go to take a retreat? Is this, is this, you know, I mean, so many things. And what I always recommend is that <clears throat> when we open our Akashi Quakers and we start asking questions of this nature, that we write the answers down. Mm -hmm. If we don't, so much information is like a big download of information many times, and it's going to be impossible to remember all of the details. Right. But when we write things down, we can take the answers that we get from, the, let's say, the, the main question, and then the A, B, C, D, getting a little deeper of that question. We can take each of the answers. And out of those, we can pluck, take out the keywords, and they're always there, that will help us to form formulate an additional question so we can go deeper. Okay. And that's what the art of questioning is about. So this kind of brings me to another question about, you know, you were saying sometimes people may be a little hesitant because of they don't want to really know the answer. From your experience, though, has anybody ever 
received any information that they weren't ready to hear in the Akashic Records? The, the Akashic Records are about bringing balance to our lives and not imbalance to our life. Mm -hmm. The masters are enlightened beings that have seen our progress, our spiritual evolution. They know what we have gone through in this life. And it's not about removing things out of our psyche and putting all things, other things inside of our psyche to make us go crazy or be in balance. It's about the gradual presentation of the information so we can get to the point of complete and total healing. That's what it's about. So okay. let's say let's say that that we are uh, perfectly aware of uh, that we were raped in in this life, and we remember that. Okay, we were twelve years old and we were sexually abused, and that created big trauma. Now, 30, 40 years later, here we come to the Akashic Records, and we ask the question. You know, why did I get raped? What happened? Whatever. And we get absolutely nothing. Nothing. So many people will say, well, this doesn't work. I'm not getting the right answer. I know what happened then. I've been suffering the consequences of all that all my life. And now the masters are not giving me, giving me anything. It doesn't work. And that's where the, as, this is where the art of questioning comes in. Because it may be that here is the event in the past and there are 10 other things in between that occurred in our lives as a result of that. Now, with this example of being sexually molested, what happened? Maybe you don't trust men. Maybe you don't like intimacy. You don't like sex. You cannot keep up... Uh, um, uh, a successful personal relationship. Uh, you don't trust men in, or women in general. All of these things, you know. And uh, so all of these little things are ramifications from that particular event that you remember. But if they give you the information about that particular event without addressing all of the other things that I just mentioned or more, it will be too much for the psyche. Right. To receive that information. So what is important is to clear from the present to the past, always. Okay. So in the present, I'm asking this question and I'm not getting anything. So the question will be, is there something else that is significantly important for me to explore right now before I can get to an answer of that question? And the answer will be yes. Mm -hmm. So what is it? And by asking this question, then you will have the memories because so part of cellular memory that comes up as a result of that, such as you're incapable of keeping a committed relationship. So you explore that and you explore the remedy or no, you don't enjoy sex or you cannot uh, have intimacy with someone or you become a reclusive and you don't like to show your face in public because you're ashamed. I mean, all these little things that are not so little, you know, they're actually quite big. Right. But by cleaning up all these little things, then we can get to the point of asking the right question about what happened then. Right. The, and the answer will be given without creating an imbalance to our psyche. Mm, okay. Wow. So this is healing. Yes. This is, this is profound healing. Right. No, and profound healing in this particular case with this example will not take place by only having the understanding of why did I get raped? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We will get to that. We will get to that. But what has happened in this 20 or 30 years of your life or 40 as a result of that? And that is right there, delicious, beautiful material that we need to look at and clean it up. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. Yeah, these are these are very profound things that come up. I mean, it's 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 difficult work, but in a way it sounds like the Akashic records 
the the energy is healing. They they try to protect you from things that would be harmful. So you are in a, a much better place to um you know, I, I, I understand that. I mean, when you think about like things like PTSD, you know, other ways, other modalities of healing, you know, this is kind of a, they don't usually do it in some big chunk of, of information. You know, people might go to therapy for years, you might do, you know, other modalities and everything. So this is a way to kind of get you to that healing space in a gradual way that, that you can comprehend and it's going to yeah. be much easier for your whole system. Um, I would like to just mention one quick thing, if I may. Mm -hmm. You said a little, just in what you said right now, you said this is difficult work. If you believe it's difficult work, then it is okay. difficult work. Right. Okay. The truth is that it's not difficult. That is a condition of the mind. You know, there is there is a psychological human condition that we must look at, that we must address, because that is what is keeping the world numb. You know, so the truth is that it's not difficult. It's actually quite easy and quite joyous because you encounter something that that happened in the past. Well, it's already gone. OK, mm -hmm. so if we can look at it like a like a pile of dust, we can blow it, you know, and then the results of that, of encountering, facing that, that happened in the past and letting it go with the joy of liberation, mm -hmm. then it becomes a joyous journey and not a difficult journey. Right. So you have to choose. So it's really about reframing a lot of these things, you know, like choices, choices that we may may have made before, like say because we were angry or hurt or whatever. Now this gives us with with those imprints gone, it gives us the potential to do something different for the future, have a completely different experience. Yeah, it's really beautiful work. It's, 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 it's beautiful, beautiful work because what we're doing is imagine that everything that has happened in, in, in the past, all the bad things that have happened in the past is all the, the discards from the kitchen. And all of that we throw into a compost pile. And then that compost pile which is the negative emotions, the anger and all that, once we liberate it, then we can bring it into the present as the fertilizer that is needed for us to continue moving into the future in a free, more liberated way. You know, mm -hmm. again, you know, it's all about uh, the condition of the mind. Uh, I said a little while ago that the mind is like a, like a big uh, treasure chest and, uh, and we just have to be willing to to open it. And if we are willing to open it and truly uh, be in a humble space to say, oh, that's what it is right there. This is beautiful. I can use it in this way or that way. Then we can turn the dial. Everyone, everyone is capable of doing this. You know, <laughs> we just have to learn how we turn the dial and we adjust to a higher frequency. It's all about vibrational frequency. You're a vibrational healer. You know, it's all about vibrations. Every organ, every bone, everything has a particular unique resonance. Every thought, every memory is imprinted with a resonance, a vibration. You know, if we plug in, imagine that you could plug in, like a, you plug in a lamp into the mind of the Buddha or into the mind of an enlightened being, whomever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, why do you think it can, it, it can happen to your life if they were able to achieve complete and total enlightenment? You would not be thinking like the little you. Right, exactly. You would be thinking more like the master, you know, and then we start developing. We, we need to cultivate that energy within ourselves to be able to get to a point in which that extraordinary reality, the ability to plug into a higher mind, mm -hmm. we don't have to plug in anymore because we're able to plug in ourselves. And right. then what we do is we are radiating light and we let others plug into ourselves. Mm -hmm. Not like energy vampires, a different thing. Right, right? right exactly. We're plugging into ourselves so they can too see that, that if I can do it, you can do it as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's part of it too. I think part of the journey is to, to go from that separate state where, you know, this is where we have some of the, the illusion of our separateness, you know, into that more connectedness, you know, it's like, we all are part of the divine. We all part, you know, but it's like, we have to kind of find our own way through that, you know, but it all begins with us feeling like we're separate and then having all of these issues as a result of that. But when we gain that deeper understanding and raise our consciousness, it can happen. And one of my favorite things that you say in your book is as you let go of the past, you are becoming the architect of your future. So a lot of the work that you do is really about empowering people, you know, having them tap into those own resources so that they see that they're these really powerful creators that they really are. You know, we can co-create like a, a really pretty amazing future, you know, like you, you always talk about like the potential of the future. And, and I, I love it because it really is infinite. You know, if we can use tools like the Akashic records, um, are there any other things that, that you would recommend for somebody that maybe is feeling stuck at some point in their journey and they, they, they want to be able to kind of open up to something more to get them unstuck. What would be the first thing that you would recommend? <laughs> the, the, the image that came to me by is a stuck. I, I saw a bottle of wine and being stuck with a cork in there. So just know that is what is within yourself is like this delicious wine that has been sitting there waiting to be opened up. And when you pull the cork and you give yourself permission to explore and find your passion, to find and to explore and find the inner stillness of the mind, when you give yourself permission to, to, to unplug from uh, social media, from uh, movies, from uh, all the news and all of that, and you truly go into a, into a deep inner space to, to explore. I keep saying that meditation is my medication, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that to me is, is really the best, the best thing, you know, figure out who are you, you know, what, just explore the condition of the mind, explore your belief systems. What are the belief systems that make you be and feel the way you do? You know, are you mimicking mm -hmm. your mother or your father? You know, did you learn to be depressed in your life because your mother was always blue, feeling sad and depressed? And now you are, you know, 30 years later, mimicking that, you know, recognize what is yours and what is not yours and what is yours that you don't like, you know, the recognition. Mm -hmm. I There is this thing about myself that makes me feel not so good. I remember when I was maybe about 14 years old. I, I used to be, uh, they used to call me Mr. Lonely because I was always by myself and I wanted to be quiet. I didn't want to be too social. I got a little depressed and sad, quite depressed and sad actually. And, and I remember stopping and saying to myself, how do you like feeling the way that you do? And recognize that number one, I didn't like the way that I felt feeling, feeling depressed. And number two, I rec recognized that it took a lot of effort for me to get out of the depression. So I realized that it was easier not to be depressed than to be depressed and start working harder to get out of depression. Right. You know, so what I did back in when I was 14, 15 years old, 16, is I did whatever I could do at the time to keep myself in a happy, positive space. And to me, right now, is the same thing. You know, I got rid of, <clears throat> of those feelings a long time ago, but it's the same thing, you know. Do something, you know. What is it, you know, that, 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 you, that you like to do? There must be something, you know, that we, all, that we all like to do. If we just simply like to be, you know, quiet, then we just sit and meditate. And we learn how to meditate and we master meditation and we understand the different styles of meditation and the way they can help us. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a wonderful thing. And that's something that, you know, I 
try to do every day. And when I don't do it, I definitely, you know, it's, it's something that I feel, you know, it's like my, my mood changes, like it's something that really grounds me and centers me. So I, I think that's wonderful. Um, well, I know we're kind of running into a time issue now. We've got about 15 minutes left and I wanted to see if we could talk a little bit about the chakra toning meditation that you're going to walk viewers through and maybe give them an idea of what to expect before we get into it. And then I will pull up the, the PDF so that we can, you can guide them beautifully through that exercise. Thank you. Well, I'm sure that most, uh, if not all the viewers know what the chakra system is and the function the, of each uh, chakra. Uh, the chakras are filters of energy that, you know, filter the energy that we put out as well as the energy that we receive, you know. And uh, if we have not consciously cleaned our chakras in the past week, two weeks or a month or two months or six months, that means that that filter is saturated. It's like an air conditioning filter. I usually give the example of orange juice. Squeeze orange juice, put it through a strainer, comes out the juice, the pulp stays. You do that for one week or two weeks, then the filter is completely clogged up and whatever juice you put in there is gonna stay there. So what we have to do is clean it up. It's the same thing with the chakras. We need to clean the chakras for them to be functional. And toning is one of those uh, vibrational tools that with a particular sound of each of the chakras can be like a laser beam that goes into that particular chakra and starts mobilizing that energy that is there until there is enough momentum from the sound that makes it explode and makes it be open and free. Uh, the way that... Uh, do, do you want me to talk a little bit more about chakras or more about the, the meditation oh, itself? Yeah, maybe that maybe you can talk a little bit about the meditation itself and then I'll pull up the PDF and we can we can okay. do, we can do right. it. So in this particular case, uh, it's a chakra toning meditation that we're gonna do. We're gonna begin with the first chakra. Okay. The, the, uh, the, the color is red. The sound is ni, and what, what we want to do is to tone or chant this sound and all of chant the sounds that, that you're gonna show in just a moment. So by bringing our attention to the first chakra with that sound and visualizing the color, we start mobilizing the material that is just sitting there until we can liberate it. So toning is, uh, we bring the sound from the chakra where it belongs, and we allow it to come through the front and we send that sound as a curve like that. And by sending the sound as a curve is going to last a lot longer than if we send it in a linear way. <clears throat> now, what is going to happen is that this meditation can be done in different ways. What I am going to suggest for us today is to do the whole cycle three times. So we begin with ni and we end up with ha, one cycle, and then we do it a second and then a third time, visualizing the color of the chakra and where the chakra is located. In doing this, <clears throat> if your chakra or chakras are wide open and very functional, then you're going to be able to send the sound like ni, which is the sound of the root chakra, and you're going to go ni, and it's just going to go, oh you know, forever and ever. And if we go to, let's say, ga, which is the throat chakra, and there is this function there, you're going to go ga, and that sound is going to drop. So what that is, what the meaning of that is, that you simply have to pay a little more attention to that particular chakra. Right. Now, you, your viewers can take, a, I guess, a screenshot or something of, of these uh, sounds, and mm -hmm. they can do the whole meditation from knee to ha, in the same way, a whole sequence like that, or they can choose one particular sound if they know that they have a particular issue with, uh, let's say, the emotions. Mm -hmm. So the seat of the emotions is the solar plexus. The sound is pa, P-A, pa. So if there are issues in there and we cannot express our emotions freely, then maybe we can do the, this, this sound again and again and again and again, again and again, until we can 
release the energy that is blocked in there so we can freely express our emotions. So different ways of doing it. Wonderful. So in this particular one, though, you're going to go through the uh, tones three times. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So what I'll do now, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and mute myself and I will pull up the PDF and let you get started. So then we just get started right after that. Okay. Okay, so uh, I can only see till Ra, and there's three more sounds be below Ra, right. So I guess you have to, you're gonna have to move it up and down so people can see the whole thing. Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna begin with Ni, which is the root chakra. Uh, then we're gonna move to Da, which is the lower belly, second chakra. Then we're gonna move to pa, P-A, pa, the solar plexus, the color is yellow. And then here we're dividing the heart in two aspects. The, the, lower, uh, the, the lower chamber of the heart, the color is green and the sound is ma. The lower chamber of the heart is about human love. Then the second sound is ra, which is the upper chamber of the heart. That is more about divine love and the color is pink. Then we move to the throat chakra. The sound is ga and the color is sky blue. Then we go to the third eye. The color is indigo. The sound is re. Then we go to the crown chakra. The color is white or violet. The sound is sa. And then we return all of the energy right back to the heart with ha. Okay, so we begin with ni, and we're gonna chant this three times. So the only thing I ask you is to take a deep breath and bring your attention into your heart. And then from the space of the heart and knowing that we're cleaning, clearing our chakras, we begin the toning. Okay, so here we go. Ni Da Pa Ma
Thank you so much, Ernesto. That was wonderful. My pleasure. That was beautiful. Thank you so, so much. And, you know, one of the things I want to mention um, for those viewers who do not yet have a copy of your book, The Akashic Records, this is a tremendous resource that I think everybody should have. This is a, a wonderful tool to have in your toolbox as Ernesto explained tonight, and you can always watch his initial um, interview as well, where he really talks in depth about what the Akashic Records are, who the masters are. There were a bunch of things in here that were answered that, um, that are invaluable tools for your personal growth, your soul's growth, e everything imaginable, but for healing, this is a wonderful, tremendous resource. And so I would highly recommend this, and I'll put a link to that in the comment below so that viewers can also pick up a copy. This is this is basically like the introduction. This is like the first, this gives them the tools for kind of the first, um, your workshop or retreat, right? And then they have additional levels if somebody wanted to become a practitioner, if they wanna go further and help other people access their Akashic records to aid in their healing. Um, but 
I know you have such a busy schedule, Ernesto, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us again for a second conversation. This means so much to me, and I, I can't thank you enough for helping me open my my heart and my mind, my consciousness to something like this. This is just an amazing book that you've written, and thank you so much for sharing all that you share. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And I, you know, I can have a conversation with you anytime. Seems like an hour goes by like that, you know? I know it really does. And, you know, I mean, there, there are still so many things to explore in the Akashic Records, but I think you've really provided viewers with such a, you know, and, and for those who maybe have never heard of it and are just jumping on tonight for the first time, there's so much to explore and there's so much healing that can happen through this beautiful work. For those people who want to know more about you, that want to maybe take a workshop, um, get your book, go to a retreat, uh, where can they get a hold of you? Uh, my website, uh, journeytotheheart.com uh, is, is my website and uh, everything is there, basically. And uh, Wonderful. Well, I will definitely put a link to that uh, below. And are there any final words that you'd like to share with our viewers tonight? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that, um, uh, I think that we are, uh, experience, uh, psychological warfare, you know, I mean, is the, the, the condition of the world is, is very delicate right now. And I know that in every cycle in the 1930s and 20s and the 1800s and all that, we have said the same thing. But there is something unique about the condition of the world today with, um, with the internet and how news travels all around the world in a flash. And, uh, and we are getting so programmed in a subliminal way that I would say to all the viewers, have the courage to, to look deep within yourself stop you know separate yourself a little bit from from the craziness of the world and to see how this psychological human condition has affected and is impacting your life you know because we can all shine our light to the best of our abilities and many of us are not because of these conditions that are psychological and all of this can be overcome by having the courage to look deep within yourself and to overcome any and all of these conditions if we want to leave this world a better place then and enjoy it while we are here while you are here i think that we need to look at the footprints that we are leaving behind because it's not so much what I say or we say, but it's about those footprints and the way that you're gonna be remembered. And, and I hope that every one of us that is listening to this right now live or in the future, they come across this interview in the next six months or six years, that, that they would say, I am here to do my part. I am here to do my part. I know that I have an integral part to play in this world, in this universe with humanity. And if I have not discovered the, what that part is, then use the Akashic Records to discover that. And then once you discover what your part is, then don't stop short from becoming the best that you can be because you deserve it, the world deserves it, and people are expecting that this spiritual awakening is going to take all of us in a much higher ride of uh, a consciousness. And, uh, and we all have uh, an important part, an important role to play. Wow. Such as you. Very beautifully said, Ernesto. Oh my goodness. It's very, very true. Thank you so much for, again, for joining me this evening, for sharing your wisdom and your time and your beautiful energy and everything. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to, to connect with you again. And I wish you wonderful journeys. And uh, you know, I know you have a, a little mini break coming up in between your workshops. So enjoy your time. And I will, um, oh, one other thing I wanted to, to mention is that you are also in the process of writing 
another book or two? <clears throat> yes, and there's a couple of more books in the work on the works. One is about relationships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe mm -hmm. I'll, I'll call it Mastering the Art of Relationships, you know. Okay, something. wonderful. Well, when that book is out, please let us know and I will make sure to, you know, get word out that, that that's that's up on the horizon and everything. So people can also pick up a copy and I'm sure it's going to be just as good as this one. So thank you again for your time tonight, Ernesto. And for the viewers, um, I will leave a link to his first interview just in case you missed that. And we will also post a replay with all of his links on how to get in touch with Ernesto. Have a wonderful evening and we will see you next Wednesday. Take thank care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.